So this is the first video on numerical integration and the first thing we were going to look at is in fact Newton's Coates uh, formulae. Uh, basically Newton's Coates formulae, um, uh, the, the, the motivation and the idea comes from the fact that those particular functions of uh, f, uh, f, uh, fx, sorry, uh, those particular functions of uh, x that uh, cannot be integrated easily, um, we can of course use interpolation uh, Lagrange interpolation that we've just looked at, for instance, to substitute the function or approximate the function. One can also, of course, go on and integrate um, those approximations. So the idea of Newton's, uh, Newton quotes is simply that what if we look at the general uh, Lagrange approximation of uh, function f of x and see if we try to, because then we can integrate that as a, a polynomials are all uh, easily integrated. Um, so integrate those and perhaps from that we can develop some formula, formulae. So uh, to start with, for instance, if we uh, look at uh, the situation where we want to approximate uh, fx by uh, Lagrange p1 of x, so the first order Lagrange polynomial, then p1 of x as we know, uh, just to, this is just to remember, so this would be the uh, first order Lagrange um, uh, Lagrange uh, approximate a uh, Lagrange interpolation uh, of a polynomial uh, approximating the function f of x at just two points, and of course here we're assuming that x zero equals a and x one equals b. So essentially, what we're what, um, what we're trying to say. So essentially, what we're trying to say is what will happen then is this integral. Uh, so it's instead of this integral a is x0 so let's just replace that so this is x0 to x1 and instead of fx if we place this um, approximation if you have a look at this um, keep in mind that let's let's note uh, if we want to integrate this this is a constant this is all a constant this is all a constant and this is a constant so uh, and these two have some similarity so um, it, it, so you see the x0 minus x1, <clears throat> if I take that out as common, take that out as common here, this is x0 minus x1, so that'll be negative, so I'll take the fx1 first, so I'll end up with x minus x0 into fx1, into fx1, okay, and <clears throat> uh, plus, uh, sorry, minus, uh, we'll have x minus x1, Okay, into fx zero. So that'll just neats it out a little bit, cleans it out a little bit, and that's by taking out the x one minus x zero. Now we can easily proceed to integrate this. Remember again, just to remind you, this is a constant. X zero is a constant. X one and fx zero all are constants. Okay, so let's. Uh, so this is very easily integrated, and we end up with we leave this x one minus x zero outside. And after the integration, we have simply here x minus x0 squared over 2 into fx1 minus x minus x1 squared over 2 into fx0, going from x0 to x1. Now, as we substitute, as we substitute in the x1 first, when we substitute x1 first, we get x1 minus x0 squared over 2. That's uh, pretty straightforward to see, um, over 2. And then we have fx1, of course, with it. That's as it is. And the other term, if you see, when I substitute the x1 here, x1 minus x1 becomes 0. So this whole thing disappears. So this is all that's left when we substitute the x1 in. Now we'll substitute the x0. And when x0 goes in here, this disappears. This makes 0. So this whole thing goes away, which leaves this with x0 minus x1 squared. So we'll have minus and then the minus will become plus, okay, because we're subtracting off this whole thing at x0. So we'll end up with x0 minus x1 squared over 2 into fx0, okay. Now keep in mind this is the same as x1 minus x0 squared because it's squared. So there's no problem. We can easily replace that. And that turns out to be equal to, if you take out the, uh, if we let, uh, so this, this uh, sorry, this tells us that we have 
x1 minus x0 over 2, which we take out this uh, squared, we'll take out the squared and it'll cancel with the denominator. So we'll take out this square and this square common out. It'll cancel with this, leave us with an x1 minus x0 one minus x zero and a 2 here. And what's left inside is just fx1 plus fx0. So if we let, uh, if we introduce this h now here x1, as x1 minus x0, then this becomes simply simply h over 2 into f of x0 plus f of x1. Now, interestingly, uh, this is the trapezoidal rule. In fact, you may remember, this is the trapezoidal rule. So using the newton uh, uh Lagrange first order, uh, uh, first order approximation, we end up with um, the trapezoidal rule, in fact. So uh, we can, of course, we don't have to stop here. We can use a second order polynomial, in fact, and let's uh, look at that next. Just graphically, just to cover this part as well, just uh, for, for completion's sake, what actually is happening is this is your f of x here. Okay, this is f of x, and this is a uh, and b, the two limits of the integral that we're trying to look for. And of course, this is x0, and this is x1, uh, as far as we're concerned. And what we actually are doing is, in fact, this. This is the linear approximation of this function between these two points. And we're just using these two points to uh, interpolate um, using a linear interpolant, of course. Now, if we are to do this um, for a higher order polynomial, we need another point. So let's just do this. Here's the figure again, and what we'll do is we will go right half of in the middle of this, okay, in the middle of this, and of course this is your x0, and this is uh, x1 here, this one is x1, so this is, we'll call this, uh, in fact, we'll call this x2 and this x1. So we end up with three. Okay, so if we want to do this, we can now, we'll have the polynomial approximation f of x will be using a second order Lagrange polynomial and that turns so here's the second order uh, Lagrange polynomial approximation of the same function f of x but of course in order to do that we have to have the points uh, an extra point x1 so we are we're now a is in fact um, x0 and x2 is b so if you see here, this is just, uh, again, this is just a Lagrange interpolation. You can go back to the Lagrange video if you don't know Lagrange interpolation, just in case. But uh, as you can see here, um, now we can, if we proceed to integrate this, um, again, keeping the same things in mind as before. So after, uh, I'm just going to skip the actual calculation of this because it is uh, rather long and uh, it, it's a lot of algebra, but anyway, it all boils down to in the end just uh, h over 3 into this. Now, this is known as the one third Simpson's rule. Okay, this is known as the one third Simpson's rule. Now, now of course, um, we can go for a cubic uh, approximation, a cubic Lagrange polynomial as well, and in that case, we would have uh, yet another point. So, for instance, in that case, what will happen is um, you have your curve and uh, the points, same points before as before, A and B, but this time we will split this into two for uh, equal. These should be all equal. So we'll call this x0, this is x1, x2, and x3. So our integral will be from x0 to x3 in this case. Okay, and uh, the uh, the result will be something like uh, x uh, something like this x zero to x three f x dx, and that gives us and that gives us this. This is called the three eighth uh, Simpson's rule. This is called the three eighth Simpson rule. And in this way, one can proceed, and basically, Newton codes gives us a, a very easy open, uh, sorry, a very easy way to just uh, keep computing these different approximations. Now, of course, um, I'll summarize all these with their errors uh, next. So here's a quick summary. 
of the three uh, rules that we've looked at. Um, well, we didn't derive all of these. We derived the, uh, sorry. Pardon me. So we derived this completely. Uh, this is the trapezoidal rule. The error, which we didn't mention before here, is the is this h cubed over 12 into an f double prime of psi, where psi is between x0 and x1. Now, of course, you can easily do this by taking the Lagrange error uh, the bound for the Lagrange error for the first order polynomial and integrating that along with um, and integrating that basically from x0 to x1 and it'll give you something like this and the same goes here for the Simpsons one-third Simpsons rule you can see the error over here is the fourth derivative at the Kasai and here also fourth derivative it's kind of known as 3-8 Simpsons rule so you can see there are reasonably um, uh, of course these are these two are more accurate than the trapezoidal as one would expect because we're taking more and more uh, uh, better and better Lagrange uh, approximations now remember there is a uh, there is one important thing to keep in mind as before we encountered a problem which is that as we keep increasing the order of the polynomial we may encounter oscillations and these oscillations now, for integrals, these become even more important and more sensitive because these oscillations can add to a lot of uh, error as well. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, if we want to look at some quick uh, examples uh, of these, we can, and if we want to do that, let's uh, try to solve the integral from 0 to pi over 4, basically of sine x uh, dx, okay, and that turns out to be approximately, well, uh, one sec. It actually, if we work it out, which we can quite easily, it turns out it's actually equal to 1 minus um, uh, 1 over root 2, okay, which is approximately 0.2928932293229322. Uh, okay, so if we want to work this out using the trapezoidal rule, it's very simple. Using the trapezoidal rule, just call it TR. So this is going to be with just one point, so that's just uh, pi over 4, okay, over 2, because h is pi over 4, remember, into uh, sine of 0, okay, plus sine of pi over 4, okay, and that turns out to be approximately, turns out to be this. Now, if we use the Simpson's rule, one-third Simpson's rule, that means pi over 4 is multiplied by, yeah, sorry, pi over 4 is divided by 3 now, okay, and we have sine of 0, we have one point in the middle, which will be sine of pi, uh, in this case it will be pi, uh, now remember, just to get you to understand, so uh, what we're really talking about is pi over 4, okay, b minus a, in other words, is pi over 4. Now, if we were to split pi over 4 into two equal parts, that would mean uh, we would have pi over 8. So our each of those um, sections that we're integrating over are, is, are valued at pi over 8. So this means we'll end up with 4 sine of pi over 8 then. Okay, and then plus, of course, sine pi over 4. Okay, and that uh, is going to be approximately just the, uh, this result. So you can already see it's starting to improve significantly now. This is quite accurate. Um, and we can do one more and let's do the 3 8 rule next. So for the 3 8 rule, just let's uh, get a uh, handle on this. Um, so what's going to happen is basically what we have is plus. Uh, uh, let's first figure out what's going on. B, B minus A still remains at uh, pi over 4. But when we want to split that now into, uh, we did, uh, we just, uh, the two points, so there was uh, just that gap here, we halved it, and here we'll have 3. So basically what we're, we want to do is we want to divide B minus A by 3, in fact, so that gives us pi over 12, in fact. Okay, gives us pi over 12. So, uh, which means that we will end up with 3 sine of uh, uh, pi over 12. Okay, and then we'll have another pi over 12. So, 3 sine uh, 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. Okay, and plus we'll have a sine pi over 4. 
as usual the endpoints and that's equal to so you'll see it's approximately the same error it's not improved much uh, with the 3 8 rule but in any case um, reasonably close uh, as we have this and so you have uh, uh, an example of how all these three rules work in the next video we're going to look at the composite trap uh, the composite trapezoidal and the composite simpsons rule because as i mentioned um, uh, if we keep going this way, the problem is the higher order polynomials have us can uh, generate oscillations and that can lead to a higher error. So we look at an idea how we can actually, in fact, uh, use the trapezoidal and one third Simpson's rule within a particular um, section uh, or within the particular range from A to B. So we look at.